Scott Anderson, 97.1 The Ticket, open lines as always here on 97.1. Great to be with you on a Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. It's a good Friday, and the Detroit Tigers are off to a 1-0 start. How about that yesterday? That was fun to watch. Uh, Tarek Skubal, outstanding, dating back to last season, according to Cody Stavenhagen, who covers the Detroit Tigers for the Athletic. Dating back to last season, Skubal has surrendered only three earned runs over his past 36 innings. Three earned runs over his past 36 innings. Yesterday, had the White Sox been awarded a run simply for getting runners to second base, it wouldn't have changed the score. The Tigers still would have won one nothing. They didn't get one runner to second base. And Scubo was a big part of that six innings and was, was dominant. Two, he gave up three hits. One of them was a little infield dribbler. And the Tigers manufactured a run thanks to two guys <laughs> that we talked about yesterday. One was Javi Baez. Parker Meadows then hit a grounder to the right. Baez then stole second. He singled, stole second. Meadows grounder to the right side of the infield, got him to third. And then Andy Ibanez, fly ball, scored him. And uh, the Tigers went out and got the win in week one. And I was looking at, at the game and I'm like, all right. Do you, have the, do you don't have the box score in front of you, do you? I do have the box score in front of you. How many times did the Tigers strike out? Uh, 11. Okay. I was was like, that's probably more than, uh, than, than Scott Harris would prefer, given the way he's constructed his team and what he's talked about. But I know that the first time through the order last night, the Rangers, with their vaunted lineup, struck out five times in their first nine at-bats and ended up striking out... 10 for their entire game against the Cubs. Now their game did go to extra innings. It was one extra inning. It can happen in one day. Um, but, you know, they they aren't going to completely change over the roster and how the team is built and some of their strengths and weaknesses in one year. Uh, but still, I love pitchers' duels. I love low-scoring games. I love good defense. Tigers weren't asked to do a lot defensively. Riley Green with a couple of nice catches in the outfield. And then outside of that, they just made the plays that they're supposed to make and won a very clean baseball game to open up their season. That they did, but you bring up the type of team that Scott Harris wants, and it's a team that owns the strike zone, knows when to swing at pitches and when not to swing at pitches. And you know, having an 11-to-1 strikeout-to-walk ratio, not very good. You'd like to draw more than one walk and strike out far less than 11 times, but it's the first game of the season, and you're going against a guy who reaches triple digits when he throws in crochet. Um it's uh, it's okay. Look, it, the, the the first day, first game, it's over with. Great pitching, good defense, and you manufactured the only run in the game. So not a whole lot to 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 be proud about with the offense. Although you know Torkelson with a couple of hits, I'm happy to see Tork get off to that start because he wasn't hitting at all at, in the in the spring. But it's really about the pitching, and when you use three bullpen arms that weren't totally taxed, I mean. Miller used seven pitches to get his through his inning. Chafin used 12 to get through an inning and a third, and then Foley was throwing pure gas in the 11 pitches he threw. That's get, that's pretty efficient. It was really a, a, a work of art in the back end of the bullpen. I mean, Miller, very clean inning. One, two, three. Chafin, it was interesting that A.J. Hinch di- held off on, on chain – taking the lefty chafing out because they had a lefty leading off the ninth, which I mean, it's, it's not something completely new and incredibly creative, but I, I like to see it. I mean, he's paying attention. He's, you know, people, this happens all the time in a game. Somebody pitches a clean eighth and then if closer comes in and gives up a run in the ninth, went, why didn't they just leave that guy in there? He was dominating. Well, they did. They liked the matchup. They left him in there for the one batter. And he only threw nine pitches in that one inning. So to, to have him come right back out. And by the way, it was a game that was going by awfully fast. So it's not like he he wasn't taxed with what he had thrown the inning before, and it's not like he had to sit there for another 15, 20 minutes uh, between pitches. I mean, this was quick because nobody was hitting the ball yesterday. Now, the Tigers are what they are, right? This is going to be a, a season filled with ups and downs. They're a young team still. They've got some guys with a lot to prove. We don't know what they're going to get out of the next starter tomorrow, Maeda. We don't know what they're going to get out of Flaherty. We don't know what they're going to get out of Mize. Or Olsen. Yeah, I have some faith in Olsen. But 
I, I but Strange, I really that's don't the guy, know. That's the one on the four, the remaining that you have the faith in. That's interesting. Yep. Yep. Weird. It is weird. I think I think it is weird. However, I, I'm just telling you, I feel like that's the start I'm most looking forward to in the next four. Mine is Mize. Yeah. I feel like Casey's ready to take that 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 leap. If Casey puts in a full season without missing any starts or missing very few starts, I think it's gonna be a great season if he does that. First of all, he'll he'll be pitching well enough. Like I think, what what's his spot? Yeah. So what's the goal? Like a, a, a realistic goal for starters? What 30? 30, 30 starts? If if at the end of the year Casey Mize has thirty starts, that's a successful season because they got guys down on the farm and even in their own bullpen like Alex Fiedo that are poised to take a place of somebody who's not getting the job done. Maybe one of the most important stats of any player. On this roster is Casey Mize getting 30 starts. Healthy and pitching well enough that none of those guys unseat him as a former top pick. I think that's kind of a big deal. It is kind of a big deal. I, I, this team getting off to a good start is is so imperative. And then you, you start to dare to – like the perfect scenario for this season, right, is that the pitching staff's doing a great job. You get to the trade deadline point – and not only are, are Maeda and, and Flaherty doing well, but also that Matt Manning has pitched awfully well at Toledo, that Ty Madden has pitched awfully well, that Jackson Job has moved up quickly from you know West Michigan to, to Erie, and then you know he's he's ready to jump to uh, to AAA as soon as one of those guys get brought up. But you get to the trade deadline if Maeda and Flaherty have done anything that you could spin them off, or if the Tigers are really buying. You know that you've got plenty of minor league talent that Max you can SRs? really uh, that you could really add to this roster on the for an everyday position. I mean, they got to be paying attention. All right, are, is Jackson Job showing more promise than Bo Brisky? Is Jackson Job showing more promise than Matt Manning? I feel and like Jackson Job is untouchable. I agree, but the reason I'm saying that is not because Jackson Job is a trade candidate. But I, the other guys would. But be. the other guys could be. If Ty Madden and Jackson Job are tearing up Erie and mowing down double-A lineups, maybe they get called up to triple-A before the trade deadline. Maybe they go straight to the majors. But whatever. If they're showing more potential than the two guys at triple-A, I think Matt Manning and Bo Brisky get people's attention. How much? I don't know. Manning more than Brisky, but yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yep. 248 one 1-0. And we're already talking about adding at the trade deadline. That's right. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs>